Good day everyone and once again we are back together and uh, we are still looking at that uh, IEB uh, exam question paper. Um, so I am going to be doing quite a number of these uh, from time to time just to help you prepare as I'm aware that uh, obviously exam season is about to hit us. All right, so uh, if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you're part of the family. And um, uh, of course, you can always get in touch with us. You know, our email address is info at mlungisingosi.co.za. And uh, of course, we'll be uh, telling you about some value-added products that we will also uh, give to you. All right, so let's get right into it, uh, look into this question. Right, um, so we're given there on laws of kinematics. Um, they say an ant runs east along a straight line and eventually stops, right? They say after a short rest, the ant runs west. The graph below shows the relationship between the velocity and the time of the graph, or of the ant, rather, uh, for the ant, okay? Right, so there are a couple of things that we need to obviously be mindful of. Uh, I'm just going to zoom into this a bit. So think about it. So they told us that the initial motion of the end uh, was towards the east, right? So now look at this. Your graph starts on the negative side. So that should already tell you something. That in this case, they must have taken east as negative. So meaning that... Uh, they've taken direction to the west as a positive, okay? So those are things that are very important for us to clarify uh, in this case so that we can be able to answer the question, okay? Right, now notice what happens. Let's talk about the motion of the uh, ant uh, before we answer the question, the questions rather. Uh, so what happened? So the, the ant started from rest and what happened? Um, in this case, it started increasing in velocity. Now, please remember, uh, the fact that it's going, it's going to the negative direction does not simply mean that uh, uh, it, it tells us about uh, direction and nothing about, uh, you know, the magnitude of the speed. So in this case, what happens? It's increasing in speed up until it gets to 0 0.02 uh, meters per second of course, towards the east, and then it moves at constant speed for uh, about two seconds, from one second to about three there, right? So it moves at constant velocity, and then what does it do? It starts decreasing, so this is what we call deceleration, right? So it starts decreasing in speed up until it stops, okay? So it stops from 3.5 seconds up until 4.5, Okay, and then it starts moving uh, to the west. Remember, it was initially moving east, and we said west is positive, so it increases in velocity, all right, increases in speed there. And uh, what happens is then it moves at constant speed, um, and then it decreases in speed up until it stops. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Now, please remember, ladies and gents, when it comes to the velocity time graph. Um, you know, when you take the gradient underneath the graph, the gradient always tells you about, you know, the acceleration, right? And of course, uh, once you take the area underneath the graph, the graph always, uh, um, you know, tells you about uh, the displacement, or in this case, uh, you can even calculate the distance, but we'll talk about that perhaps a little later. Right, now, let's look at the first question. They say to us, Calculate the acceleration of the end uh, for the following periods, right? They say between 0 and 1. So uh, I'm just going to do it, uh, try to answer it right here, okay? Uh, so we know in this case, okay, let me just change color, all right? So um, we're going to say, well, the acceleration is change in the velocity divided by the change in time, or in this case, you can just simply calculate the gradient underneath the graph, right? Which is exactly that, change in y, but our y is velocity, divided by change in x, and our x is time in this case, right? So I'm going to take uh, that as my second point, and that is my first. So I'm going to say, well, my velocity 2 is minus 0 0.02, 
right subtract zero because of course we've got zero zero there at the origin and here we've got uh, 1.0 and negative 0 0.02 okay so that's y2 minus y1 divided by x2 which is 1.0 okay uh, minus uh, our x1 which is zero so and and, and of course uh, you can see how this will give us negative 0 0.02 meters per second squared so what does this mean it means that our acceleration is 0 0.02 meters per second squared uh, in uh, uh, towards uh, the east remember we've taken east as negative in this case right uh, so we know uh, there we had negative 0 0.02 We've illustrated it there. Okay, right now, um, or you can say uh, to the west. Okay, right, and then they say calculate the acceleration of the end for the following periods. I mean, for for six to seven uh, seconds. So now, when we look at six to seven, you uh, you're going to do exactly the same thing. All right, so. Uh, I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to erase uh, the one that we've already done. Okay, so now I'm looking at six to seven. Um, so that means that it's going to be change in velocity. Okay, let's just label those axes there. Uh, so I've got 6.0 as well as my velocity is 0 0.01. It's positive this time around. Okay. And of course, uh, there I've got 7.0, which is my time, and my velocity is zero. Okay, right, so y2 minus y1 again. Okay, so I'll say zero minus 0 0.01, zero minus, okay, 0 0.01 divided by, um, the time is seven minus six, okay? And of course, that will give us negative. So that's the difference there. Seven minus six is one. So that will give us negative 0 0.01 meters per second squared. Okay. So again, we are accelerating uh, in the opposite direction. Or in this case, you can look at it as decelerating. Um, you know, the end is slowing down. So it's actually 0 0.01 meters per second squared uh, to the east remember east is negative right all right so um okay i'm just going to remove those in fact let's try try and erase so that we don't mess up our diagram oh, I've, I've even erased the answer but of, of course i know you've got that right so we had negative zero point uh, zero point zero one right now they say to you fully describe the motion of the end from uh, second number three to three point five. So let's go there. So from three in this case, remember what we said. Remember it was moving to the east at uh, at uh, constant speed, but now from the third second, what happens? It starts slowing down, right? So the end slows down. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in. The end slows down in this case. Uh, from the third second, okay, until it stops at 3.5, okay, and um, let me see, they said until which time, until 3.5, yes, so in that case, um, the end slows down whilst moving eastwards, okay, uh, still moving east, it slows down up until it stops, okay, right, I'm too lazy to write that down, uh, so please, uh, you can knock yourself out. And then between five to six seconds, um, the ant is moving at a constant speed to the west. Remember now our velocity is positive, all right? So it means it's moving at constant speed uh, to the west. Okay, or you can say westwards, all right? Now they say to you, define the term displacement. So remember that displacement is the change in position in a straight line between two points, right? Okay, so remember, uh, you know, uh, to always mention that it is in a straight line. All right, now, 
they say calculate the total displacement of the end. Now, this is very important um, because how do we calculate the total displacement when we're given a velocity time graph? So we what we simply do, uh, ladies and gents, is that you're going to now look at the area underneath the graph. So uh, I'm going to break this down into different uh, shapes. We've got a triangle there. So in this case, that's the area of the triangle. Okay. And then uh, thereafter, you've got a... Okay, I just want to choose a different color. Then you've got a rectangle there. And then... We've got another triangle over there, okay? And of course, here our area is zero. And then we start with another triangle there and another rectangle, okay? And of course, you've got another triangle over there. So remember, displacement is actually the area underneath the graph. So that's how we're going to find our total displacement. Uh, and of course, if you could also use, you know, the area of a trapezium, but I just find it safer uh, to just use uh, a rectangle and, and, and squares. Right. So I'm going to say, right, so that's 3.1.4. I'm going to say the area uh, under the graph. Okay. My graph. So let's start with that area. So we said we've got half base times height, okay, perpendicular height, plus we said length times breadth, remember, and uh, we have that rectangle there. And then we have another triangle half base times height, uh, times height, okay, plus, uh, remember then we start with the triangle that is on the positive side, okay, so we've got another half base times height, there plus another length times breadth and another half base times height okay right now let's start to populate as much as possible right so in this case so when we go to the so here's our base okay from zero to one so remember the base is zero minus uh, sorry 1.0 minus one that will give us 1.0 and then multiplied by the height, our height in this case will be that there, which is um, a minus 0 0.02. Okay, and now because we're looking for the displacement, it means we will also consider the sign as well. If we're looking for distance traveled, uh, in this case, we wouldn't necessarily take uh, the sign of the velocity. Right, so we said it's 1.0 multiplied by the perpendicular height which is minus 0 0.02 that's negative 0 0.02 okay plus length times breadth so our rectangle so that's between three okay that's between three and one so what is that length that's two that's three minus one which is going to be two so that's going to be two multiplied by remember the height is the same as that one that's going to be negative 0 0.02, okay? Plus half base, again, we've got another base here. It's between 3 and 3.5, right? So in this case, that's going to be 0 0.5. That's our base there. And our height is still going to be negative 0 0.02, okay? So we've got 0 0.5 times negative 0 0.02, okay, we're trying to squeeze everything in there, plus half times our base again, and uh, this is going to be, now we're going to uh, that smaller triangle there, that's 4.5 to 5, that is going to be our base is 0 0.5, right, that's the difference between the two points, multiplied by height is 0 0.01, Okay, so we're going to say 0 0.5 times 0 0.01. Okay, sorry, I'm just going to run out of space there. So I'm just going to write it underneath. And then we go to the, um, you know, to the rectangle. That's between 5 and 6. So that's 1. All right, our base is 1 or our length is 1. 
and our height in this case is 0 0.01. So that's 1 times 0 0.1. So it's that length times breadth there. Plus, in this case, the last one, which is the triangle, uh, half base. Our base, once again, is between 6 and 7. That's 1. Okay. Multiplied by the height, which is 0 0.01. Okay. So that's half times 1 times 0 0.01. All right. So now uh, let's try and uh, work that out. So you've got uh, here half of uh, 1, which is 0 0.5 times uh, negative 0 0.02. So we've got negative 0 0.01 uh, plus uh, another, well, that's negative 0 0.04. Okay, so uh, let's just remove this here. Okay, so that's minus 0 0.04. Um, and we've got, again, another 0 0.01 times a half there. So you've got um, um, 0 0.0, so that's minus 0 0.005, okay? Um, and then we've got this one here, which is, again, 0 0.05 as well. Okay, so you've got 0 0.5 times a half times 0 0.01. Okay, so uh, in that case, you've got 0 0.05 times, so that's 0 0.025. Okay, so that's going to be plus 0 0.0025. Okay, and you've got this one here, which is plus 0 0.1 and plus, uh, in this case, 0 0.005, okay, 0, 0, 0.005. Okay, so you can use your calculator, obviously. Uh, in this case, I just calculated it from the top of my head. Um, so we've got minus 0 0.05, uh, so that's minus 0 0.05. Uh, for the first ones, okay, minus 0 0.005, okay, uh, plus 0 0.0025, okay, um, please, if it happens that I make an error here, uh, please do forgive me, uh, it's quite a lot of numbers to work with, and I wish you guys knew that, uh, you know, recording these videos, uh, yeah, uh, the nerves just uh, kind of take, uh, you know, yeah, they get the better of me. All right, so I get an answer of 0 0.0525. Uh, I could be incorrect. You can verify that. But uh, ladies and gents, look, it's, it's neither here nor there. You know, the whole point is about, you know, you knowing how to uh, actually do this, okay? Uh, if it does affect our answer going forward, look, it, it's it's really not a big issue, okay? Of course, I know that you would have done this uh, correctly on your calculator, okay? Right, uh, you know, the whole point is about the principle, right? So, in this case, um, the, f uh, the last one, oh no, uh, actually they said, uh, calculate the magnitude of the average velocity of the end. Oh no, uh, actually before I finish with the displacement. So I get a positive displacement. I'm not too sure if that is entirely correct. Um, if it is not, if I'm getting a positive displacement, what it simply means, um, yeah, I, I, I totally could be incorrect because when I look at the area, uh, here, it's much bigger than the area, uh, you know, in, on the positive end. So that answer should actually be negative. Okay. Yeah. So you'll, you'll check it out. I think there should be a negative somewhere. Uh, we should actually get a negative answer. What this simply means, remember, when you get that negative answer, it means that the displacement uh, of the end, I want you to think about it. It was initially heading uh, to the east. Okay, it stopped at a point, all right, 
um, and then it headed west. Now, if the direction to the east is longer, okay, remember, if this is our point of departure, right? So um, if the direction to the east is longer than the direction towards the west, so it means this end would have been displaced to the west. I hope that makes sense, right? So uh, what this simply means, uh, I mean, sorry, it, it would have been displaced to the east in the negative direction. Hence, I'm saying that our answer should actually be negative. So it means that whatever answer that you get, okay, will be uh, to, the, uh, to the east. It will be eastwards, okay? All right. Um, right, so you'll verify that final answer for me. Please, uh, if you do find something that is different, uh, please just uh, put it on the comments and let us know what you got. Okay, right. And then um, the, uh, well, almost last question. They say to you, calculate the magnitude of the average velocity of the end uh, for the whole journey. Now, remember, ladies and gents, when we calculate the average velocity, so for average velocity, what we simply say is it's going to be the change in displacement divided by the change in time. Uh, so you can say, uh, you know, change in S in this case, uh, divided by the change in time. All right. Now, what was our total displacement? Our total displacement, we got that 0 0.0525. Uh, of course, if you got a, a different answer, use that particular answer, right? So it's going to be 0 0.0525 and what was the total time in this case that would be the total time it took from zero seconds up until seven seconds right so it means that i'm going to say well the change in time is going to be seven seconds okay and uh, of course um if your velocity is different uh that means that your time uh, or rather the displacement, the velocity will be different as well. Okay, so um, I get, oh no, actually. Uh, all right, let's fix that. So 0 0.0525, okay, divided by 7. And as I said, if you got a different answer, um, please do let us know um, if, you know, um, if that answer was different. Right, so our velocity in this case, uh, right, if your answer is negative, as I said, of course, we're going to put that because they said the average, or they said the magnitude of the average velocity. So we don't really, uh, direction doesn't matter much because we actually just looking at the magnitude. Right, so that velocity will be 0 0.0075 and remember that velocity is measured in meters per second. I'm not too sure why this thing refuses to write. Uh, so that's meters per second. Okay, right. So that's what we find for the magnitude of the velocity. Uh, remember that when you find the average, you just simply take the total displacement divided by the change in time. Okay, but if you are looking for distance, we take the total distance divided by the total time. Right, and then uh, finally, they say on the uh, on the axis provided. Okay, so I didn't take the 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 answer sheet. In this case, I'm just going to try and wing it. All right, they say on the axis provided, um, on the answer sheet, draw the graph showing the relationship between acceleration and time from zero to three point five. Now, ladies and gents. I want us to uh, quickly remember uh, from 0 to 3.5. Now, we found the acceleration here to be negative 0 0.02. Between 0 and uh, uh, 1 second, it was negative 0 0.02. And then from 1 second all the way up until 3 seconds, remember the acceleration is 0. Why? Because we're moving at constant speed, right? So it means that we've got zero uh, acceleration between here and, and there. And then, of course, uh, we found the acceleration between, um, they said between zero and, and uh, uh, between three to 3.5, right? Uh, I don't think we calculated the acceleration there per se. 
but uh, of course it should be twice the acceleration that we got there um, in this case so that would be uh, by the way that's a positive gradient so that acceleration should be positive okay uh, you can calculate it change in velocity over change in time um, and I can already see that I'm going to find twice the acceleration there so it's going to be 0 0.04 meters per second squared of course you know now how to calculate that um, so you can actually just knock yourself out right so what will our acceleration time graph look like okay so you're going to first have an acceleration time graph okay so there's our acceleration this is between zero to one second remember that acceleration we consider our acceleration to be constant that's in meters per second squared that's time in seconds okay so that's our time in seconds please remember to label your axes right um of course you were provided with a graph in this case i'm the one who just didn't have that okay so remember for zero for the first second we've got negative 0 0.02 so we'll have minus 0 0.02 there okay and now uh, then it changes to zero right uh, in fact i think it would be even better if i were to change the color of this okay uh, so that we can see the graph clearly okay i'm just going to remove this right so what i have there is negative 0 0.02 between the first second and then i have constant velocity but constant velocity means zero acceleration between two to uh, between one to three seconds so this would be uh three whereas this would be one okay and then my acceleration therefore becomes positive and it's 0 0.04 okay so that would be 0 0.04 okay so this is what an acceleration graph uh acceleration time graph would look like okay uh, remember that we consider acceleration to be constant okay so um, that is what it would look like in fact uh, you know just to be more accurate so that it shows uh, because then it seems like uh, okay so that's 3 to 3.5 so that's a shorter period of time okay and that should have been shorter as well so that's one this should be the longest uh, part of the graph and then you've got uh, that one at 0 0.04 all right ladies and gents i hope uh, uh, you understood that okay so that's acceleration versus time okay and essentially that's how the cookie crumbles right i hope that uh, you were able to follow on this question as i said if there was an error in me answering uh, of course you can let me know about that one and uh, just uh, on the comments uh, side or section uh, please just don't forget to hit that like button uh, at the end uh, of course if you find these uh, you know sessions helpful uh, please do also give us some nice thumbs up uh, at the end of the lesson and thank you so much hopefully you are able to um, you know continue to prepare and work hard towards that final exam otherwise from me for now i'll see you guys next time shop shop